If you were starting a YouTube channel in 2024, what would you do? One of the biggest opportunities if you want to succeed on YouTube is consolidating time and saving people time. Here's what I mean. What if my first videos suck? They will. Your first videos will be your worst videos. You know, you'd be terrible. But the recipe to get to success is suck, 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 cess. How do I write good titles? That's something to master. How do I make good thumbnails that get people to click? That's something to master. But there's something more important than all of that. So Sean, if you were starting a YouTube channel in 2024, what would you do? Especially considering that you've been in the YouTube game for 17 years now, you've started multiple channels, three silver play buttons. How would you get started in this new year? Yeah, so I wrote down five things when I thought about this question. And the first one is courage. You have to start messy. And I think about this, you know, I have some tactics as we get into it, but now that I've had the chance to coach so many different people that have started YouTube channels and grow their YouTube channels, I've realized that really the first thing that holds us back is our self and our fears and our mindsets. We feel like we're not ready. We feel like, man, is anybody going to care? We feel like, am I going to be judged? Is there going to be negative comments? And these are all legitimate mindsets, but you're not going to get results if you don't start. You're never going to know if you don't start. Everything that you want in life is outside of your comfort zone. So I do want to lay a foundation that um, you got to start before you're ready. You got to start messy. You probably have a million questions. Even if you've already been subscribed to or the Think Media podcast or other channel for a while, you still probably are like, but what about this? But what about that? You have to just start. And my second tip is clarity, and we can hit that one in a second, but the reason that I say start messy is there's really two kinds of people. Maybe you're already a, a professional, a business owner, so you're already know you're in real estate, you already are in carpentry, and you, so you know like you're going to start a DIY channel helping people fix stuff around the home. You know that you're going to start a real estate channel to get leads, clients, and sales in your local community. You know you're a musician that uses Ableton, so you want to start doing music tutorials. Like You already have clarity. So if you have that, we can dial that in when we get there in a second, but there's this whole other category where you know, someone's listening to this, they know they want to start, but they're unsure. They, get, they have a million questions about what niche, what topic, what about this, what about that? And I would encourage you to just start posting videos. Just try something. Don't overthink it. Because we do learn by doing. And I know for me, because I didn't have fierce clarity when I started, I just started posting random videos on my Sean Cannell channel. There's a million lessons of mistakes I made, but the benefit of that was I started to learn how to film. I was learned how to edit. I experimented with this topic, that topic. And even though the brand ended up being kind of not great and the niche wasn't really clear and I was all over the place and that wasn't my successful YouTube channel. I haven't even uploaded there in years. It was a personal development experience, a skill development experience. And I like to say I have four YouTube channels that helped me eventually start a successful one. So absolutely, in 2024, start as soon as possible. Don't put it off. Don't just watch YouTube videos. Don't just consume information. We learn by doing. Take action. Press record. You got. It takes courage. You got to get uncomfortable. So just start. So this is one of the most common pieces of advice that you give people is that they have to just start. And so it might sound like the kind of thing that we just kind of push to the side. Like, yeah, yeah, of course, Sean's going to say that. But I would just challenge everybody who's listening to this, like, yeah, but have you actually done it yet? Because it is actually so underrated that you just have to keep doing it and keep doing it week after week, right, Sean? And so it's that showing up every week, even though you are afraid or it hasn't been going as well. So continuous courage. And so what is point number two? Yeah, so point number two is clarity. And here's what I mean. If you've started and if you have maybe a few things that are under your belt, like you're comfortable, you figured out your camera, it may just be your smartphone. You've maybe figured out that you're gonna just edit videos simply on your phone or use CapCut. I love that as a mobile video editor, something like that. You maybe have shot a few videos, so you've overcome some hurdles and camera confidence, et cetera. You know, the title of this talk is like, if I was starting from scratch, what would I do? So I thought what we could do is we could look and process a channel that I've always dreamed of starting, but as a dad with a three-year-old, one-year-old, this video podcast, our other channel running the company, it's just a dream and it's on the side and I got enough going on with the niche I'm in. But I think about, you wanna get clear on what is the best channel for you related to your passions? What is the best channel for you related to things that'll keep you curious? Ask yourself, 
will I still be interested and fascinate, fascinated by this and willing to research this and loving to study this and read about it? Like you don't have to be an expert, but if you're curious and you love it and you're interested in it, I think that's the superpower. Um, so I'm passionate about it. I'm I'm curious. I would uh, I geek out on it. It's a personal thing that I like to research and study and would love to share about. And it's also a way to make money. Now, that's just making the assumption that uh, that would be the desire. How do I start a successful YouTube channel in 2024 and a profitable YouTube channel? So the case study for me would be I would start a channel on biohacking in the health niche focusing on maybe nootropics, which are like these brain vitamins. There's different, sometimes it might be in liquid form, pill form. Um, But this kind of category would be, in a way, ice baths, red light therapy, PEMF mats, brain drugs, nootropics, all this different stuff. Because that's also like something I personally, as an entrepreneur that wants to be at high performance, something I also like I don't know, it's almost like a hobby. And I like to read about it and research it and watch stuff. So having clarity for the listener, what channel, what topic best fits at the intersection of your passion, your proficiency, what keeps you curious, what you're good at, what you've put some time on. I don't know if I'm good at biohacking, but I've got a few years under my belt. I've got some knowledge under my belt. And one of the myths is you have to be an expert. I wouldn't even call myself an expert. I have some tips to share that actually help when you're not an expert and why you can still create a great channel. But I am just a little bit, a few steps ahead of others in that area. I've read more about it, researched more about it, followed people. Okay, great. And I'm also from, before I've even started the channel, identified like a business plan or a money plan related to that. And uh, uh, we call it profit, passion, proficiency, and profit. And around profit, it's like, I could do affiliate marketing for the different products that I personally purchase. I've got red light therapy panels on my wall. I've got a PEMF mat. I've got these um, uh, uh, cupboard full of liver and you know glutathione and vitamin D twelve. You know vitamin D plus K two. And I'm drinking all kinds of like ginger shots and comparing. Uh, element electrolytes to other electrolytes and how much sodium, magnesium and stuff. So it's, again, I'm personally into it. And I love talking to people who are experts, which I could interview and we could get back to that. So if we're talking about how do I start a successful YouTube channel from scratch, one of the most underrated things is getting your niche right, getting a to- your topic right. And don't let that be confused with starting messy. And don't let that be confused. Nobody wants to hear this, but you, let's say you started a YouTube channel wrong. I think that's still okay. It never really worked. You did 50 to 100 videos. One of the most painful things could be pivoting your niche or starting a second channel, but people make the mistake that a lot of times that's what it takes to find success. There's a stat that says the average successful entrepreneur that like gets through the the dip of hard work and getting cash flow and getting startup happening and actually makes it to some level of success and sustainability has started 2.6 businesses. So what does that mean? They have one successful business and out of one to two that failed. So one, like on average, so any successful entrepreneur business owner that now has a successful business on average had at least one fail or two fail before they found the one that worked. I think that could be similar to YouTube as well. And it may not be that you actually have to have a different channel, but I think that should give you permission to like, what if my first videos suck? They will. Your first videos will be your worst videos. You know, you'd be terrible. But Though, you know, your way to get to success, I heard one person put it this way, the recipe to get to success is suck, 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 cess. Your first three or 30 videos might suck, they might not be very good, but that's what leads to success. So start before you're ready, then dial in that clarity. And so that would be the niche that I choose. I I would pick that niche And I'll explain why in a little bit, but that would be tip number two. Get clear on your niche, get clear on who your channel's for, what problem does it solve, and get clear that, again, if you want this to be financially viable, come up with a money plan. Come up with kind of a business plan for your channel ahead of time to like start with the end in mind. Look down the road. What is it you want to build? And start a channel intelligently and strategically by thinking through some of those things. I think it's key what you're saying about the ability to pivot, that one out of those three businesses ideas is the one that takes off, but there's two failed ones in there because so many people ask us like, well, I I have this channel already and like, I don't know what to do with it. So we're saying 
then don't do that channel. Like if if follow all of the advice, listen to Sean Cannell and other experts and actually, you know, don't be afraid to pivot and to change into, um, you know, after you're taking in all of this advice. And so I think that one is really key for a lot of people listening because a lot of people are going to need to pivot after listening to a lot of this training. And so um, that takes us into point number three. Yeah. So point number three is create a schedule. You know, what gets scheduled gets done. It's in a way also like create a system for how you're going to be producing content. We don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. What's a system? Well, I am researching on this day. I'm recording on this day. Um, it may be even things you put into your life. My aunt's going to watch the kids Saturday morning so that I can film. Um, I'm going to edit here. And then eventually, and there's a lot of things more than we'll cover here, but you know, then I take the SD card out. It goes to my computer. The system is I use this editing software, and then I put it in there, and I export the file, and I upload it. Um, and ultimately, you know, one of the most powerful things we've created is – not just a seven step system for YouTube success, I think media, but all but a, like probably a hundred micro systems. Everything in life, I think for a life well lived that's effective and productive is gonna be empowered by systems. And so having a schedule is one of those. If you're gonna start a channel, it's not enough to just start it because technically to start a channel, right? You just gotta set it up. But what, what we mean is like, can we start a channel that has some level of consistency on it? And I would recommend... Um, you know, there's so many different answers to this question, but it's like, how many videos should I upload a week? I would recommend one video a week. And I would want to define that one thoughtful, strategic, quality, researched, crafted video per week. I don't mean it has to be edited or anything. Again, you may be able to just hit record, talk for seven minutes, turn the camera off and upload it. But for that seven minutes to be as powerful as possible, having a little practice, having a little planning, um, having some notes in front of you, thinking about what the title is ahead of time, thinking through it. Prior planning prevents poor performance. And one of the biggest opportunities if you wanna succeed on YouTube is consolidating time and saving people time. Here's what I mean. So really successful personal finance YouTuber named Graham Stephan. And one of the things he's known for is he puts out great research videos that are concise, clear, and they really take complex information and they make it simple. Well, what does he do? He's known for researching 20, 30, 40 hours for one video. Now, I'm not saying you have to take that much time to be successful, but think about what happens. If he, if he researches and plans for 20 hours and the final product of his video is 10 minutes, it's one of the reasons why the video is so successful because we're all so busy in our lives. You're doing the heavy lifting, again, even if you don't edit. If you take an hour or two hours or three hours to prepare, and then all of that time preparing, you've consolidated it down into a three to five minute or a 13 minute video, you're doing a service to people. That's why people feel the value of it. The, the flip side is true. If you just wing it, it kind of reminds me of my first video. I was like, listen, this is my first video. Um, I'm not gonna be energetic or entertaining. I don't even have a plan. And that video didn't go viral, like, because there was no plan. There was no energy. I didn't really go into it intentionally. So one long form upload per week to clarify. I think that there's, it gets interesting with YouTube shorts. Those are much easier to create. It's fine to start with YouTube shorts. Those are gonna be vertical videos, 60 seconds or less. That maybe switches it up. So if you can do a long form video and a couple shorts, totally fine. If you have bandwidth for more, great. But I think people are underestimating committing to uploading just one quality video. And I've, I've, this is what I mean by quality too. I mean content value, not production value. Back to not editing. Content value would be you put your phone on some shoe boxes in front of a window. The, there's carpet on the floor and you're, it's a smaller room. So just the on-camera phone microphone is good enough. Like, so you have no accessories, no gear, great. And, but people can hear you, they can see you, you got some daylight. The production value is not that impressive. It's not a fancy camera, but the content value is the title you thought about, the topic you know the audience cares about because of research, and then the, the investment you've put in into the information that you're sharing. And so um, think about that content, like high quality content. And I've heard it said that the definition of excellence is doing the best you have with what you have right now. So excellence is a spectrum. Of course, if you're not comparing yourself to other people, you just wanna beat your previous best. 
if you start messy, if you have a decent level of clarity of this is the direction I'm going, this is who my channel's for, what problem it's gonna solve, and then you commit to once a week, a lot of things can happen. Momentum happens, you learn as you go, you start getting a feedback because you're putting outputs out there. Um, you're, you evaluate the results as you go and you are continuing to improve. We always say get 1% better. And there's something powerful about the one video and long form is your best path to still to being paid the most money from YouTube to, I believe, having the deepest impact. Sure, shorts can attract a new audience and they can spread and, and, and absolutely do shorts. But if like, to me, that's like the foundational ethic, like YouTube long form and by definition of long form would be over a minute, but I'm say, you know, five, eight minutes, 12, 16, we get wrapped up in those details, just quality. How long should the video be? And for me, Back on my nootropic biohacking channel, I start thinking about, okay, what are the opportunities, which actually I think that's a future point, but that would be number three. So so schedule, if baseline, upload one high effort based on the resources you have and the time you have video per week and commit to that, you're gonna see crazy momentum over the next year. Awesome. So number five or point number four, is that what we're on? Is yeah, point so point number four, that's right, okay. So point number four then is, topics. I think that in 2024, one of the biggest mistakes that people are making is they're not knowing what matters most on YouTube. So let me actually go in descending order of the things that and how important they are. People wonder how important are YouTube tags? Not very important. Let's put that in number five. Okay. How important is your YouTube description? Kind of important. You can reinforce some words and data that might communicate to YouTube what the video is about. Also, there's some practical things there that could serve the viewer, maybe some links you could put in the description that could lead to monetization. So description is probably in the fourth place. What's most important with the videos? Okay. In second and third place, I think it's a tie. People say, what's most important? Is it the thumbnail? Is it the title? I would say thumbnail is actually probably second place because it's more important than title. You want a good, th uh, a good thumbnail, but you, you literally can't have one without the other, like they work together. So I'd go third place, most important would be title. Second place, most important would be thumbnail. And when I'm thinking about that, we'll get to number one in a second, but when I'm thinking about uh, title and thumbnail, um, that helps you with just, again, so much clarity around crafting a title before you press record. That's gonna lead to clicks and views and success there. So people say, okay, if I, how do I write good titles? That's something to master. How do I make good thumbnails that get people to click? That's something to master. But there's something more important than all of that. And that's usually the only thing that gets brought up in, in conversation. Okay, so what's in first place? If tags is fifth, description is fourth, title is third, thumbnail is second, what's in first place? Topic. Topic is in first place. And here's why. Because the creator who understands the viewer best wins. And if you wrote the best title possible, these days there's AI tools. And so you're like, help me write a great title about X. You know, you write a great title. If you design the most amazing thumbnail uh, as possible, like you hired a graphic designer, you paid him $500 for the thumbnail. You hired a writer who's a famous novelist. You paid him $500 for the title. Okay, you know, well, if it's about a topic that is not what's top of mind for people, a topic that people aren't super interested in, a topic that isn't actually like a pain point or a high desire, here's what I like to do. I like to actually score topics on a scale from one to 10. How interested are people in this topic? Is it a one? They're not that interested. Like it's information they may wanna know, but they're not that interested. Is it a 10? It's the problem they're worrying about every night. If you're looking to get your first thousand subscribers or make your first $1,000 on YouTube, then join our free YouTube challenge that many other small creators have joined and seen tons of success. During this free challenge, Sean is gonna share some of the best strategies for growing to your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, as well as making your first $1,000. Just go to tube1kchallenge.com or check the link down in the description. It's their mo their highest ambition. It's one of their biggest problems. It's troubling them. It's causing conflict in their relationships. It's one of their desires. And if you think about the topic being a 10, even if, this is what's wild, even if the title is not great, the thumbnail is okay, 
Again, tags almost have no weight anymore, but there's some practicalities to them. Description, like topic is just such, such a big deal. And if you talk about the right topic at the right time, look at anybody that covers trending news or something that is timely in the moment, the thumbnail might be terrible. Like all they did was get a few things in the title right uh, to at least you just know what it's about, but the fact that you wanted that information right now, that story right now. So I think it's about topics. And let me apply some of the topics I would do to my biohacking channel. So on my biohacking channel, um, I would do product reviews. Again, uh, I love these. We call it RSP, review-specific products, because there are products that help you. I am personally a, a shopper. I've purchased red light therapy uh, panels. I love them. I would review them, talk about my experience. But there's also a reason I would do this, because it would add value. It, it, notice we got our clarity right. And I picked a topic that is related, a channel topic that is related to products. Like if you're going to biohack, you can do a lot of, you could get into the sun, you could go into a cold river to cold plunge. You could do a lot of things that are natural, but there's also a lot of things, which those are great videos too, but there's also a lot of things that are purchasable products that don't, that don't just serve the viewer, but are also monetizable from the start. So I, could, so I could review specific products, tap into like affiliate marketing. I would do interviews. So again, I'm not actually really that big of an expert. I'm just the curious student that almost would act like a reporter to curate the experts. I love the interview model because it allows me to just learn more, ask questions that I have. And here's what I'm saying. You don't need to be a product review channel. You don't need to be an interview channel. We actually teach 16 different kind of topics, video categories that are very powerful for getting views. Interviews is one of them. Review specific products is one of them. But I'd be picking topics. And what I love about, again, interviews is probably not at the start. I wouldn't be able to get somebody like Dave Asprey, who's big in the biohacking space, or I wouldn't be able to, not at the start, but you could start like interviewing different, different people. I, I use what's called a PEMF mat, pulse electric magnetic field. Um, there's all these things about recovery, how, what it can do for your body, all these benefits. And I discovered a guy named Dr. Pollock, who's kind of like the leading expert. He wrote a book. He also has an e-commerce store. He also has an affiliate program. Before any of that, I went with personal need. I wanted to feel better. There were some chronic health things. Um, it's a very niche product, a niche category, but I don't have this channel, but I have a feeling someone like Dr. Pollock, he has like 5,000 subs on his YouTube channel. I think he'd agree to an interview with me. And, and I could jump on using a tool like StreamYard or something like that and interview somebody who could go deeper. There's, there's endless opportunities in the biohacking world to do that. So I'm now creating leverage. That's one form of content. I could go to the products that are already in my house because I'm living this. And that's why if you pick the right channel topic, you should already have the stuff because that's who you are. That's what you already are into. That's what you love. And now you're able to cash in on your passion. You're able to monetize your passion. And uh, I would answer specific questions um, related to um, biohacking, maybe, you know, how do you get better sleep or is melatonin good for you or bad for you? And, and I may, I would actually would need to probably do a lot of interviews to get some of that information. But then I also um, would teach specific skills, maybe things I've learned how to do. Here's how you uh, here's the routine that I have. I might do morning routine videos. So we, we, that's that topic is a topic for another time. Um, but I think picking the right topics is going to be so key to getting views, picking the right channel topic and picking the right video topics. And the last thing I'll say on this one is there's really kind of two big categories of content. There's search-based content and there's suggested content. Let me try to define search-based content What's powerful here is Biomax red light therapy, 900X or whatever model panels reviewed. So what I love about this is the reason I love product review videos and, and is because products are influencers. People are listening to this, right? Sean, I'm at zero. I'm starting from scratch. How do I get discovered? And yeah, and people don't know you and people are not searching for you and they're not looking for you. And why would they? Because they don't know you yet and you fear you're in obs obscurity. So what you want to be asking if you're starting a channel from scratch is how can I tap into influence that's greater than my own? Most people think I wish somebody famous would shout me out. I wish I could get a famous interview. Well, of course, that's one thing that would be helpful. And that's what, another reason why interviews are, are a great form of content. But people don't realize that products are influencers. One of the ways I grew my brand was I talked about particular camera models. You didn't know Sean Cannell yet. You knew you were looking for a reviewer comparison of the Canon 60D. 
you found that video, you saw that that was my experience, video, you know, teaching how to use cameras, the best lenses, and then some level of connection happened there. And the influential thing was a search-based topic, was something that somebody was looking for. So I actually, starting a channel from scratch and even for established creators that want to continue to grow, I would not ignore search-based content. In a suggested world, and I'll explain what that is briefly, but search-based content is actually kind of a forgotten art, and it's probably one of the biggest opportunities for people in 2024. But then the other option is suggested. So if the title of a search-based video is you know, tutorial or review um, of a Biomax red light therapy light, a suggested title might be like this weird gadget supercharges your brain. And it's a curi like that's not search based because you didn't wake up and be like, oh, is there a weird gadget that supercharges my brain? But we all see YouTube videos like that. That's your biggest shot for going, getting, you know, more kind of viral content. You're going for mystery, curiosity, the thumbnails, like what is the gadget? They maybe see it. You're 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 doing that kind of thing. And and what I've seen is there's extremes. People usually pick one or the other when the superpower is to potentially do both. The other superpower is realizing that videos titled properly can kind of also tap, tap into to both. Um, and so red light therapy benefits, pros and cons of red light therapy, dangers of red light therapy, that's a little more search-based, but you also might be like warning stop using red light therapy panels immediately, dot, dot, dot. And so that actually could be search. Like maybe somebody types in red light therapy, they actually find that because it's, and then you take it down the direction. Like, again, you don't want to clickbait, but there is something about mastering marketing, mastering human psychology. And, and those are some of the skills you want to learn. And, and maybe you're, you're in the video, you're like, listen, you need to stop using red light therapy if you don't want to feel awesome and amazing. And you're like, oh, you kind of, yeah, I thought you were going to say dangers. Yeah, if you just, you know, so so I think master, so, so anyways, topics, learning how YouTube works, tapping into the power of search-based content. That's also what I would focus on heavily if I was starting. And it's, uh, if there's one of, it's easier, I would argue it's easier than suggested, just meaning if you are still developing your charisma, your skills, you're nervous to get on camera, you're still just getting started. We have so many students who have filmed videos on the worst camera ever. It's like they're filming on a baked potato. It's like a horrible webcam in a poorly lit office. The shot composition is bad. The audio in the room is echoey. They, their hands are glued to their sides and they're like, they, and, and we've also watched them transform over months and years. But even when they start that way, if they have good information, and they are really clear on that how that information is going to help somebody. We've seen videos with 300,000 views because they got their topic right and they put good information behind it because it was searching for a particular pain point. And again, suggested may not be suggested. You may not go as viral if the video is, you know, kind of boring. I mean, make it a goal to not be boring, but there's plenty of kind of practical videos that are pretty boring that still get millions of views just because they're helpful and people will endure it and it allows you to actually grow, get views, maybe even start making money while you're also developing your skills. So anyways, we've said a lot, but I, yeah, number four, pick the right topics. Master coming up with the right video topics for your audience. Tap into search base, tap into suggested, and definitely subscribe and stick around because that's, um, you know, we have a lot on that. Yes, we talk a lot about pain points. So problem and solution. Your channel should identify a problem and I'd also present the solution and every video should do that as well. And so uh, no matter what, like channel topic, video topic, we always recommend that people think about problem and solution, right? Which is why you're saying like that search-based content is really gonna be the, where the money is for most people starting a new channel. And so um, as we get into our last point, I would just say, Sean, that all of these topics, you, you mentioned there's 16 different video like types that we go through and that we teach people. Each one of those, you could do have one pain point and you come at it six different, 16 different ways. So there's so many different ways to tackle 
one topic and one pain point. And we do talk through all of that inside of our course, Video Ranking Academy. And so going deep into each one of those and the structure of each one of those videos is something that we can like walk people through as well as picking your right topic and all actually every one of these points we could go deeper in inside of our course. And so um, I think we'll have like a link in that if anybody wants to check it out, but you can take us into point number five. Yes. Okay. So number one, courage, start messy. Number two, clarity gets, you know, get clear on who and what, who's your channel for, what problem does it solve? one video per week, or just get your schedule dialed in, topics. And then finally, if I'm starting a channel from scratch, extreme focus, that's my number five, extreme focus. And I learned this the hard way. So this kind of makes me think about my journey on YouTube. I, the first channel I started was in 2007 from my church. That was pretty focused because that was the only channel I was doing. And it was a clear reason that, by the way, back to clarity, it actually was clear what we were trying to do with it. Like give people a way to watch the sermons, upload you know, different videos we had. It was so early YouTube too. We weren't really doing much strategic, but it was kind of like a resource, a way to send the videos out, email videos, really early days. But then as I started to get into starting my own channels, I started my personal channel. I started a Clear Vision Media channel for my business, which is like a portfolio of my video production business. Then I started a channel called Think International with my friend Jeff Morris, which was like a faith-based channel, interviewing pastors and leaders and authors uh, kind of in the Christian world. And out of Think International, I started getting questions about cameras and what gear we were using to produce those videos. My background had been by that time in video for about seven years, video production. So that led to the start of Think Media. Um, you know, fast forward a few years later, and I started a, a side project with my friend Video Inf uh, with my friend Benji called Video Influencers. But here's what we just like listed out. I would say that maybe around 2015. Um, I was trying to actually simultaneously run all four of those channels. I was still collaborating with Jeff every so often. We'd go to like a Christian conference and interview a few people. I still did some video production jobs, so I'd upload those in my portfolio. I wanted to vlog when I could and vlog a trip that I was on, so I uploaded that on like my Sean Cannell channel. I wanted to be consistent on Think Media. And then eventually, uh, because I up to that point had so much YouTube experience, we started Video Influencers to kind of collect our learnings um, and ramp up to a book we eventually wanted to write. So here's what I'm saying. I was doing way too much. And that was not the only thing I was doing. My life is just as complex as anybody else's. I mean, I know people listen to this. It's like, you got stuff to do. You might've got kids, you got school, you got work, you're busy. And when I think about extreme focus, I think that the problem is if you try and chase four rabbits, you'll end up catching none of them. Or you'll just be so tired and fatigued and you'll delay your eventual success because you've diluted your energy in four directions when you could have compounded it in one. So I think there's a couple of mistakes that people make when starting a YouTube channel. They maybe get an idea, they have a topic, but if you're listening to this, you're probably like me. You're creative. You have new ideas every day. You might have new ideas for YouTube channels every day, new businesses, new opportunities you see. You might be like, oh, I should talk about AI. Oh, I actually, I want to start a bone broth company. What? I want to, you know, start doing a book, a book club. I want to write a book. I want to write an ebook. And that's as I spin off. And that's not just YouTube. Because if you're listening to this too, you're like, maybe I want to create an online course. When am I starting my merch line? How do I start my Patreon? How do I? Slow down. Take a breath extreme focus. Coming from the person who ch just tried to do it all, it led to more fatigue. And I'm so grateful that all those learnings and pain points ultimately got me to where I am today. And I'm very grateful to be here. But one of our company missions is to shorten people's learning curve. We just want to help you avoid the pain and the heartache and the fatigue. And, and for some, um, Chasing too many rabbits might lead to so much exhaustion, so much discouragement, so much burnout that would have been avoidable if you guarded your focus. So I've heard focus stands for this, follow one course until successful, focus. Follow one course until successful. What's the one channel you're focusing on? What's the one brand you're building? What's the one business you're building? And I'm actually pretty stunned, and I know that maybe at least half people listening to this though, they're... They front. They want to start from scratch, but they want to start three channels because they're like, man, I got so many passions. But now that I've thought about how like the channel should have a clear who and a clear what, 
Well, the answer must be then to just divide the things I want to talk about on three channels. And I would challenge you that that would be an answer for organization, but that's not the best solution for your sanity, your success, and your momentum. If you had to pick one, pick one. It's hard enough to make one business successful. Why are you trying to make two businesses successful? It's hard enough to make one marriage successful. I guess if you're into polygamy, it's why are you trying to make three marriages successful? I don't know what people got going on or three. It's hard enough to make one wife happy. Why are you trying to make that's so my wife Sonia actually always uh, she's kind of into the polygamy shows, you know, sister wives and stuff like that. And she always, she's always, she's like, I just can't even imagine the dynamics, but all these different things. It's like, yo, you should pick one, you know, uh, focus, you know, uh, I actually heard Dr. Phil put it this way. And I mean, I'm just quoting him here, but this is the way he said, he said it. He said, God gave you one ass. So pick a horse and ride it. You can't ride two horses. Like, you get, and so God gave you one butt, one rear, rear end, pick your horse. And let's just go a little bit deeper on this. I think the other thing though, if I'm starting a YouTube channel from scratch, I am also want to be hyper aware that I, I want to say this, 2024, public enemy number one is distraction. And in 2024, we got more noise coming at us than ever before. There's more side quests on Instagram and distractions and more ads coming at you that you could be hit by and more business opportunities. Because even as you're starting a YouTube channel, again, you're like, oh, what? There's like new tools to make my merch, which yes, like eventually you could make merch and you could get your t-shirt going. And, and you're on day one and you're like, should I use Patreon or should I use YouTube channel memberships? On day one, neither. You should start get one video up a week, make sure your topics are good, get clear and like be consistent because you don't even have enough momentum yet to be like worrying about the full business development. I'm not saying put that in your business plan. It's great to have clarity of at least the general direction of the best ways to monetize your particular niche, but people get so distracted by so many different things and it delays success. At best, it delays success. At worst, it just wears you down too much. You can't think clearly. You got noise coming out. You're also, you're maybe watching too much content on YouTube. You're watching too many experts. You're reading too many books. You're buying too many books. These are like all things that, I, that I've done myself. You're, you're going too many directions at once. Let's make 2024 entirely different. You wanna start a successful YouTube channel? I would challenge you to, to narrow the scope of even who you're learning from. Many people have many different paths of how to get to a particular objective, but like pick one. Like pick, pick an expert, pick a system and work that system. There's a famous military quote that says a good plan violently executed this week is better than the perfect plan executed next week. There's something about having a maniacal sense of urgency, but also a maniacal sense of focus, extreme focus. Because because there's so, you know, I want to get in shape. So what am I gonna do? Follow four personal trainers? This actually is a challenge that I have. I have my network of relationships in like these different business groups I'm in and whatnot. And I'm fortunate and the students that we coach and we coach a lot of people in fitness. And oftentimes people will come to me and be like, Sean, uh, you know, VRA, Video Rakit Academy, the team, Melissa, like you guys have just transformed my life. I'm so grateful. I would love to like coach you for free. I know you have a goal of getting in shape or I'd love to give you a discount or I'd love to give you this. And I'm like, okay, cool. But then here's the problem is I got this person that they have a methodology that they're willing to do that. I have a, another guy over here that he's willing to help me. And then I have another thing over here and I actually have a personal trainer that I hired here in Vegas and I got another, and everyone's a shiny object. Here's what's interesting. If I actually just work out a little bit and do the stretching and work a diet plan, it doesn't have to be the perfect. If I just work one of them, then I'm gonna get more results than actually being overwhelmed. My brain shuts down and then I end up doing nothing. And I, I hope that people can really, they're probably feeling that. Like this is too real in a 2024 world. And it's not that eventually you can't continue to sharpen your skill set. Like, man, I really learned this methodology in 2024 and I mastered it. Like I've heard people say, they brag about, I read a book a week. I read 52 books in 2024. That's some people's goals. I wanna challenge you, maybe change that. What if you only read one big book this year 52 times and mastered it? What if you so focused like, like the ultimate badge of honor is not how much information you consumed. The badge of honor was how much information you mastered and implemented and applied. Mm -hmm. 
So extreme focus, try to narrow down your time, your energy, and don't, don't misunderstand me that one of my favorite quotes is you could do anything you want, but you can't do everything. I think it was David Allen who wrote a great product, uh, get stuff done productivity book, but I actually would expand on that. I would say you can do anything you want, but you can't do everything, but actually you can do everything just not right now just not all at once. So if you start looking at starting a YouTube channel from scratch right now and start dreaming over the next five to 10 years, it's been said that most people overestimate how much they can do in a year, but they underestimate how much they can do in five to 10 years. So don't overestimate how much you can actually get done in 2024. Focus, extreme focus, get this thing moving. And then know that, okay, after you have your it's sequencing. After you have move one, two, three, four, five, I'm doing my weekly video. I'm clear. I'm starting messy. I'm doing these certain topics. Some momentum's building. I'm investing in myself. I'm leveling up my skills. Okay, great. It's been a great 12 months. Now we're at a particular level. Now I also have more rhythm. I'm not as overwhelmed by this. It's more of a routine. Now I want to write a book. Great. So now I'm going to write after I got about 12 months into it, I'm going to start writing my book. Okay. Maybe around year three and timelines can change, but just don't try to do everything all at once. I actually have a dream of starting another channel. Interestingly enough, uh, I would love to start this health-related channel, and maybe I will. And we've got a team of 30 people here at Think Media, and we have help, but I actually am applying extreme focus. I want to get back to my Sean Cannell channel at some point, maybe do a little bit more behind the scenes, maybe some other stuff. But even I am choosing in 2024 we're doing Think Media. We're doing the Think Media podcast. We have two channels. Well, you have two channels, Sean. Yeah, and also three silver play buttons, a gold play button, and 30 people helping me. So like, it's a little bit of a different season. Know the season that you're in. Stay focused. Kill distractions. Public enemy number one in 2024 is distractions. The external distractions and the internal distractions of you doing too many projects, too many things all at once. Keep it simple and focus. So we've got five points for everybody who's thinking about starting, actually who should be starting a YouTube channel in 2024. And that is the first and foremost, John, is clarity. We've got clarity or courage. We've courage, got courage is first and foremost. Start courage. messy. Yeah, yeah, you have to. So you've got courage, clarity, strategy and systems, mm -hmm. topic and focus. And so with those five points, I just think the entire time I'm listening that it, we can go so much deeper in each one of those. And there's so much more that we can be teaching, but we have to go all the way back to that first point. It is just courage. It's getting started and it's filming your first video. And that really is the, like the action item, the next step for everybody who's watching is to just get that first video under your belt, um, punch fear in the face and press record, as you always say. And then from there, we can really start to work on each of those next four four points in the, over the next year. So after you do punch fear in the face, record that first video, and it's time to start digging into each of those next four points. Sean, as you were going through each one of them, I, really all I could think is like, we have this, like the perfect bundle of courses that every single one of those points, it, we have courses and downloads and classes that go through them on a deeper level. We actually just closed out like this really big sale on it. Um, but I, I think we should open it back up for people who are watching this because, again, it's like such good alignment. So um, we'll have that for our podcast listeners at thinkmediasale.com. We'll give you guys, again, like access to that um, sale just for everyone who's listening. And it has, we, uh, Sean talked about systems and processes. We have a checklist in there that's like walks you through your entire shoot day checklist. So that's really like, that's literally the system that you need. We have a course called Niche Finder that talks through your channel topic. And so it really is like direct alignment is as you're talking or listening to Sean, you're thinking, I want to learn more about this. I really want to get these things nailed down for 2024. That bundle is going to address all of those questions for you. And so thinkmediasale.com is going to be um, a great next step for a lot of people as well. And it's like, I mean, we were offering it at a crazy discount. I guess that's what we're going to offer for everybody watching now too. So it's just a really good opportunity to jump in and get started on some deeper learning. Thanks for listening to this episode. Uh, make sure you like, rate the podcast, give us a review, and we'll see you on the next one.